in the Hammerhead garage getting it fixed. Uh, and we just spoke to Cindy about, uh, we're, we're a bit broke. So we, we need uh, a little bit of cash. And Cindy has just offered us a job to get some money. Um, and we are now uh, looking at the um, Astral Sphere, which is part of the Ascension system. This is how you level up your characters and progress. It's the new Crystarium. Yeah, or um, if you play Final Fantasy X, it's you know, sort of similar to uh, the Sphere Grid as well. So you gain AP throughout the game by doing a variety of things, mostly by leveling up, mm -hmm. but by doing certain other kind of like other side quests, conversations, that kind of thing. You g gain AP, which you use to unlock skills for each of the four main characters. And so we've got Noctis um, and his, his three mates, basically, who are going to be with him on this quest. Um, do they each have different talents that you develop, or can they all have the same talents? Oh, no, they, they all have... Actually, we can have a look. Um, so you can see from the... This is Noctis's... The main character, this, not this is the character that you play as. Um, he is the crown prince of uh, the kingdom of Lucis. And yeah, you can see the kind of skills that he can unlock, mm -hmm. uh, which are quite uh, combat focused. They all kind of focus around his special ability, which is his warp strike. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Prompto, is his um, astral sphere. And Prompto uses a gun. So he's more long range than you can see some of his uh, skills. So he can equip machinery. As you can see, like Federal Shot, obviously, do with with firearms, with guns, and then Ignis, you can see below, his abilities revolve around um, Mark, his main skill, if you will, his battle skill is Mark, okay. so um, that Mark's, well actually we'll hopefully be able to show you in a bit of gameplay. Does he bit. buff? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, but if, I, mean I, if I see this, like, is it, a, is it a difficult game to get into if you never played Final Fantasy before? Oh, not at because all. Because this looks like for me, like, what was this? What's happening? Uh, what do you have to do? But is it really something you get to learn when you're playing this game? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, obviously, yeah, we've kind of just jumped straight into the game. So like, <laughs> I'm just trying to explain everything as quickly yeah, as I can. Right. Um, but, yeah, if you, are, if you are a hardcore Final Fantasy fan, there's loads of depth for you to, to get involved. But then, yeah, if you're completely new to the franchise, if you've never touched a Final Fantasy game, everything is easily accessible. It's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things. It's easy to understand and learn, but difficult to master because the skills, I mean, obviously you don't get all your skills right away. You, know, you learn as you uh, progress through the game and you have the choice to level up characters how you want, depending on where you allocate your AP. So you can, yeah, you'll learn how all the characters, you know, how they all fight, I guess, and like more about the personalities, all that kind of stuff. Um, as you play through the game, and it's all, yeah, they explain the display. It's not, you're not just thrown in the deep end and expected to know, like, exactly what all these characters are going to be able to do, like, by the end of the game. And so. right here, we can see some side quests that are actually given to us by people we're talking to. So the diners, where you can go to get new areas of the map and essentially get uh, a get given beast to go out and kill. Yeah, so the diner, yeah, in this area of, what well, did I tell you beginning game? Yeah, as you mentioned, this is where you can... Yeah, find out some new information, start some new hunts. So if any of Final Fantasy XII fans out there, it's sort of similar to that. Um, so yeah, there are monsters around that yeah you're going to hunt and, and uh, kill for a side quest. You explore the map as well. Like after a while, you will see more, explore more. Is it? Yep, okay. yep, for sure, for sure. There's definitely yeah, there's tons of areas, tons of things to see, explore, uh, discover, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean these looks great. These it's really beautiful. One it of the does look absolutely stunning. The graphics, yeah, the, yeah. the visuals, the detail really in the truck smooth. there. It really is a, you know, I'm sure everyone looking at it now is blown away by the, how the high quality f uh, fidelity of the, the visuals. He's yeah. got lovely hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, thank you. Oh, you mean me, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my oh, wait. So what, one one of the the oh, you mean the game. Oh, the <laughs> game. Sorry. I one thought. of the things, though, when we were in the diner just then and we were getting the side quests, uh, one of the things that I really liked is actually recommends what level you should be at when you go and play that game because I don't know about anyone uh, on Twitch right now but um, there have been some side quests I've taken on in previous Final Fantasy games where I have died really miserably <laughs> and depressingly because I just was not at that level and I had to remember to go back and kind of farm for them once I'd finished the game. Um, so it's quite useful having this, this recommendation. Oh, we're going to a battle. We're going yep. to a battle. I hear yep. it. Like, I hear the sound of the there battle. It's getting, <laughs> getting hyped. Yeah. Get hyped, son. Okay. So yeah. One yeah. thing that's really different about Final Fantasy XV compared to other Final Fantasy games in particular is, yeah, combat's all real time now. I mean, you can see how fast and like, how action-orientated the battle system is. So, gone are the way of, like, 
uh, like the menu based yeah. mm -hmm. systems yep. and it's all real time. No ATV. I mean, how much of a decision was that to make? Obviously, Final Fantasy, you've had, you know, not just the main 15 games, but all kinds of other secondary games, and it's one of the most beloved franchises in the gaming. How much of a brave decision was that to, you know, kind of change the fighting mechanics? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not a developer, so I can't really speak. <laughs> <laughs> speak I on, need to know the <laughs> On behalf of the dev team. But the thing is, like, the Final Fantasy franchise has always been about innovation and change. Like, that's why all of the games are completely different. So yeah, if you are new to the franchise, you do not have to play 1 to 14 or any of the other Final Fantasy games to get into Final Fantasy 15. That's nice. This can be your first because it's a new new world with new characters, new story, new systems. But if you are a fan, there are lots of like kind of nods and references and things that like themes that travel across all Final Fantasy games. Can we talk about the battle AI? So going back to Final Fantasy 13. Um, of course, you had the battle paradigm, so you could kind of control what your, uh, the members of your team were doing. So how do you have any impact, if you can, on your three uh, cohorts? Well, the, your, I guess Noctis is uh, his best friend, Prompto, Ignis and Gladio, they're all AI driven. So as you can see, like in the battle going on right now, like, they, they will basically do their own thing. I mean, the AI is really advanced. So, so you literally never actually have to program it in the Ascension to tell them what to do. You just, you just basically skill them up as you see fit. And if you need healing and they're still alive, they're potentially going to heal you. Yeah, 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 okay. exactly. I mean, hopefully um, Ian, who is playing the game, isn't going to die so we won't see that. No <laughs> but, pressure. Like, no so pressure. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you just saw actually that was a combo attack. So the green bar on the left, the more you fight, the more that fills up. And when it fills up, you can initiate a combo attack between Noctis and one of the three characters. Um, I was looking a bit, I only saw in the corner of my eye there. I think um, Ian just used uh, Prompto yeah. for, for his combo attack. But yeah, so the AI controls the characters. But what you can do is, if you, because it's all real time and everything's going on, you know, as you see it, you can position yourself in ways where you can do team up attacks uh, with certain characters. Like if you attack enemies from behind, and if one of your other characters is also attacking from behind, you can do a, um, a joint cross attack, um, which is something that just happens kind of naturally because one of the main things, one of the main themes of Final Fantasy XV is the theme of brotherhood. It's about these four characters, you know, Noctis, Prompto, Venus, and Gladio. The, um, the thing actually that never actually been done before in the mainline Final Fantasy games is that for the first time in Final Fantasy XV, you start with your entire party. In other games, and especially like in other RPGs, generally speaking, you know, you go around and you collect allies and you get to know them throughout the story. Yeah. In Final yeah. Fantasy XV, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. But in Final Fantasy XV, you have your party, you have them from the start, and they have a long history together. They're best friends. So we wanted to represent this in like, well, I guess this is represented in the combat system because, oh, there we go. That was uh, Gladio's team up attack. Um, because, what was I saying? So we wanted the battle system to be like, you can see the brotherhood between the characters. So if it's like, let's say you were in this situation yourself and you had, you know, your best friend with you. You wouldn't have to go, you wouldn't have to tell them, hey, hey pal, I'm going to go do this. You do this. You know, you just see it like, I'll back you up, son. We'll, yeah. we'll smash it. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? We'll so smash like, it. Yeah, we always have. Yeah, just like always. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's like, that is part of the reason why, um, well, again, because I can't speak for the dead team, but like, I assume that's part of the reason why, you know, those systems are in place. And it's also why we have the bigger Final Fantasy XV universe, which again, is something quite unique to Final Fantasy XV. I think that's quite exciting, the fact that there's a movie and there's going to be an app and all kinds of other stuff to build into this world. You know, it's going to be a huge void that people kind of take in different different kinds of media. Now I've seen uh, Noctis' fiance, Luna Frey, <laughs> Luna for short, and she seems like a really powerful character, so she's an oracle, um, which kind of makes me think a little bit of Yuna and her, like, you know, how she okay. used to send spirits. Uh, it, it feels to me like there's almost like a kind of nice uh, throwback in a way. I don't know if that's true or not, it's just how me as a Final Fantasy fan like to think. Um, but she seems really powerful. Are we going to see her in battle at some point? Well, uh, we're not going to see <laughs> anything past the uh, beginning of the game today, or, or at EGX, uh, and I wouldn't want to ruin anything okay, in bad. terms of 
Stop asking too many <laughs> questions. <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. We have to find out ourselves. Spoiler, can, hashtag no can spoilers. Can I ask then, of course, a huge part of Final Fantasy is your Elodians or your summon. And people got very excited with the, uh, the TGS trailer because we saw a Shiva. Yeah. You, so you do. So are we going to maybe get some friends <laughs> at some point? <laughs> Well, I think... Hashtag no spoilers. I can't get no, any spoilers. <laughs> You're probing, yeah. but you can't, can't get them on. We're trying. Because really. that's the thing. Like, these are the kind of things I think, well, personally, as a Final Fantasy fan myself, like, I kind of want to discover, yeah. or I, I expect, you know, fans would want to discover themselves. So we don't, we deliberately don't want to give away yeah. too much. Oh. Um, but can we, can we talk, actually, going, going back almost oh, to the beginning, so to speak, but um, can we uh, find out a little bit more about Noctis and why he's actually out here? Yeah. Like, what's, what's, what's the reason he's on this mission? So... A lot of this is kind of explained in the cutscenes. When we jumped into the game, we obviously skipped uh, the beginning, the opening cutscenes and all that kind of stuff, um, just so we could get into the action much faster. But in the opening scenes, this is kind of all kind of explained. And as well, if you watch the film Kingsglaive, Final Fantasy XV, and the anime Brotherhood, um, which is you can watch for free on YouTube, uh, YouTube forward slash uh, Final Fantasy XV. Um, so the reason why Noctis and his his friends are on this journey is there's some tensions there's oh well, i'm trying to not give away any spoilers for king's day or anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. so um <laughs> there's some tensions between um uh -oh. the kingdom of lucis uh-oh you're going to die oh no no he just used up all his mp so oh, it would be really nice though <laughs> <laughs> you were saying we should ill on my so what is it yeah so there's some tensions between the kingdom of lucis which is um Noctis and um, his friends that were there from, and the um, Niflheim Empire. And Noctis is to be wed, as you, know, you mentioned, to Luna Freya in um, a place called Tenebrae. So basically, um, Noctis and his friends are basically on a journey to Tenebrae to get, for Noctis to get married. Basically, is why uh, they're on this journey at this point in the game. So this is basically like a uh, really action-packed stag do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most people yeah. go to Prague. These guys go to the outback. Do you know what's great as well? Prompto will take photos along the way, and every time you camp, you will see a selection of the photos he's taken. Oh, awesome. And just like <laughs> on a stag do, some of them aren't great, some of them are brilliant. <laughs> and you can just imagine, like, if I was out with my friends on a road trip to go see my uh, bride-to-be, then those are the exact sort of photographs my uh, my friends would be taking the whole time. <laughs> and and exactly the same photographs you tried to sweep under the rug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing I think, you know, I mean, as I say, I've not really played Final Fantasy. It's, a, it's one of those things that just I've not got into, but having watched a lot of it on Twitch and knowing people who do play it, it's that sense of camaraderie, that sense of banding together and stuff like that. The photos, you know, the fact that you've, you've got your companions from the start, it's just going to fully enrich the experience even more. Yeah, and in that kind of regard, yeah, each of the characters do have a certain role, if to play, if you will. Like, yeah, um, mostly to do with um, their personal interests. So, Prompto, you know, photography is one of his, his main <laughs> hobbies, his love. Um, Ignis, you'll see when we camp, uh, is is the cook. He's the chef of um, of the group. And yeah, oh, be careful when you're hungry when you when you play this game because the food looks amazing. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, Gladio like is like deep outdoors, so he's uh, he's the main, I guess, camping expert, if you will, <laughs> and not this loves fishing. So yeah, we, it, as part of the side quests, um, and like extra, I was going to call them extracurricular activities. That's very that's very school, yeah. isn't it? Like yeah. <laughs> in school. Um, yeah, you can you can go fishing. People love any games. fishing side quests as well. Any game with fishing side quests, they people, put hours in. people yeah, yeah. Hours. lap that up. But I really love the, the, the swords in it. They're like so big. They look amazing. I'm pretty sure Not I only saw... swords, but... Oh. I think I saw one of the other guys kind of just get weighed down by his sword. Yeah, the moment like he sort of swung around and went... Well, that's <laughs> it. It's because well, they're, they're big and they're heavy. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to wind yeah. up. you got to wind up to get that big... Uh, deal, there we go. Deal with that big damage. So, yeah, that's the other thing about the battle system is that it's, it's again, very easy to pick up and understand and learn. But... There's a lot of depth to it if you want to go in deeper. So you can change your weapon at will. You can see kind of the weapon kind of select on the bottom left, which you can select oh, what you want to use. Choosing, yeah. okay. And if you hold down the attack button, you initiate uh, your blitz attack, which is um, I don't want to say it. it's basically is your main, your primary attack. Mm -hmm. And at certain points during that, you can change weapons 
instantly, so you can extend your combos. And if you hold down the directional button with different weapons, you can perform weapon-specific types of attacks. So you saw like with the broadsword, like you know where uh, knock this um, kind of crashing down inside. Like with a lance, I don't know if you guys caught it on the stream. There was um, a, a lunge attack, and with the sword. Um, you can sidestep, you can backstep, and with certain weapons, get, like the sphere, you can launch yourself up in the air, do aerial combos, um, and yeah, you can link them all together. So it's simple in the sense that, yeah, you can pick up and you can, you can play the game and you can, you know, vanquish your foes. But then if you want to do it with style, and then if you want to, you know, be really pro at the game, you know, it does have that depth to it. And when you get to those harder monsters and those harder enemies, you're going to need to, you know, by that point, hopefully you'll have practiced enough to be able to do it. But mm -hmm. you don't want to run into those too early on in the game because, you know, they're going to be mean. And we've just, <laughs> we've just successfully completed a, I guess, a side quest. And we've actually just gone straight into another one. So is this, is this chapter of the game basically a series of linked quests? This, these actual um, quests are part of the main, main storyline. But, um, yeah, the, there is links between the yeah, story. Because, it, because it's open world, you know, the quest lines have to flow. Because yeah. otherwise it would totally break that, you know, open world experience. You yeah. know, yeah. you'd be like, every time you take a step back, and then you have to go initiate something else. Yeah. Oh, are we going camping? We're going to we go camping. Yes. Yeah, I think we need to rest up before the next fight. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen in the trails they've got those little camp seats. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Because this is um, the other thing with... Um, that we haven't actually mentioned about the level up system is that when you do battle, um, you obviously gain XP, but to actually level up, you have to camp or you have to rest. Uh, and then you basically cash in all the XP that you've banked. And, it, and the reason for that is, well, the thing is, it's like the way in the, in the world, in like kind of the law, it's like they're camping and they're, you know, they're all kind of hanging out and they're basically like reflecting on their experience throughout the day, or however long it was since you last camp, and then that's when you know they take stock of what they've learned, and then hence they get stronger. Because you have to do that every day, that camping, like the uh, for how long or how is that? You can stay out at night. Mm -hmm. um, there are more dangerous creatures out at night, uh, so you know it, it depends on how much you want to risk and reward uh, <laughs> sticking around <laughs> or sleeping. But you know you can stay out. You also get boosts, uh, like buffs from the recipes that Ignis makes, and we'll see those in a moment. Um, but they will run out when it hits night time. So if you don't, if you stay out, you're not going to have that benefit if you've not camped for a while. I'm really uh, excited about the fact that you have to go and camp because it's kind of a reminder of myself to go to bed. Because like, when I <laughs> back in the day when I played Final Fantasy X, I spent about two weeks in bed. <laughs> I just left bed to have the occasional shower and some occasional. food. Occasional. And I just used to go back to bed and I literally just played continuously. I think my GCSEs. So oh, it's, it's fine. okay. I had okay, study okay. leave. I had spare time. No, <laughs> games are more important than school and work. Exactly. Like, exactly. Come on. Where exactly. would we be if we actually paid attention exactly. in school? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We we did, for, the rec for the record, we did pay attention. We did pay attention yeah. to school. Yeah, yeah. Got first school then the Yeah, That that. Yeah, stay in school, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in school. <laughs> school is important. One thing I've noticed about this game, as I say, you know, I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy expert, but it, it's, they're generally set in like high fantasy worlds. This seems to be set in a more modern day setting. I mean, what challenges does that bring, and what is what is that going to mean for the players uh, coming into the game? I think it's you know it it means that you can sort of. You see these familiar uh, surroundings, these familiar landscapes, so you sort of instantly kind of gel with it. You kind of, you know, you get it. You know what the world sort of, how it works. And then you see these massive fantastical creatures and it's like, it, it really brings that sense of awe and wonder. Like, oh my God, I want to I wanna explore this and I want to see, you know, everything. And, and having that sort of rooted in that reality meets fantasy kind of side to it, um, I think that really just gives you something that you can, you can acknowledge and sort of gel with, but there's also, and then get further and deeper into it when you actually get to, you know, get to grips with everything that's going on. Can we have a look at this menu? I was going to say, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> just before yeah, we go on. Enough about okay. the game, yeah. let's look yeah. at the food. Look at I this can food. see some toast, no got toasty yet, rice so. balls <laughs> yeah. and veggie medley stew. I'm a fan of toast. Mm -hmm. Flame roast. I'm not toast surprised. <laughs> What uh, is the egg one? Open so here you can learn it, and then you, later on you can make it. These are the ones that we already know, mm -hmm. and then uh, as you go through the game and you discover new ingredients and you meet people, you can find new recipes, and then they'll okay. be added to this list. So, okay. 
Uh, also, you need to have the ingredients in your stock, so when you're running around the world and you're picking stuff up... Oh, you're getting them. Yeah. yeah. So what do we want to eat, guys? I, I I like the look of that open-faced breakfast sandwich. That, mm. the that eggs, yeah. the ham. Yeah, yeah let's go for it. Go Geeky for it. ham. <laughs> I love the way that you guys have instantly looked at what the food you want to eat, rather than like the actual yeah. stats. Oh, like right. the <laughs> Probably that you because get. we didn't have really breakfast. I think that's <laughs> why it is. <laughs> so it increases the attack by 30. It's not just the fact <laughs> yeah, that yeah, exactly. it's <laughs> So that looks lovely, though. That is a beautiful it? egg. And that's, that's you know, egg. the graphics there, the, even just the, the shine on the plate, and it, it really showing off the, the technology of the time. And it, these Final Fantasy has always been like kind of ahead of the curve when it comes to the visuals and the presentation, and it seems like it's knocked it out of the park again. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> on behalf of the dev team, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> is there going to be any uh, campfire banter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting little things that happen at random moments or when you get to specific places and it's all very much making you feel part of that group of, of uh, guys you know and that, that they actually are friends and the sort of the banter that they have between each other sort of really drives that friendship uh, home so yeah, here's uh, it's a shame you can't you can't hear it well i guess because we're talking so much yeah you well, can't the, hear the, the music that you heard like a little bit before it sounds like or now i think still it's, it's, it sounds like you're in a restaurant, having like a nice <laughs> meal and such. I wouldn't mind Ignis cooking for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these are the photos that Prompto has taken to, from, oh, from this the is, day. This, so is, yeah, that's that this is great. This, <laughs> this one, not so much. Yeah. Not, that's not the photo I take. Oh, that one, that one, yeah, yeah. To be fair, it was in a bit of a battle, yeah. so um, he, you know, he probably had other things to be thinking of. Are these unique to your uh, gameplay as well? Yeah. Nice. Some of them, like, bits that happen like in the key bits of the story, like the bits at the beginning. Um, on the then, so where you see Cindy, where you knocked it. This is from the opening uh, of the game. So some some of the photos, you know, because they're big plot points, will be uh, we are going through everyone's game. Yeah. yeah, some are preset and then the others are randomly generated based on your action. Definitely with the so, fight. So, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is why, and it's really cool because you get something like this, it's great, I want to share that right now. Like, look the, how, next one the next one's like, like yeah, okay, right. Prom, so you should have been, you know, avoiding <laughs> this the one. Uh, safe This one's good. One. This one's good. This yeah. is like, yeah, the, the groom to be has fallen over. Let's take a photo <laughs> yeah. of them. It's like one of those uh, photo booths when you're on the, like, a roller coaster at Fort Park yeah. or something, <laughs> and then you like, Okay. Now we wait. Oh, it's the thing. And so the does other it save every time you get to a campsite? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's auto save and there's manual save. Okay. Um, and if you, I was going to say this really quietly, but if you die, does it just take you back to before <laughs> the, the last battle like it does in the previous game? It just lets you try again straight away? Or? If you die, you're going to have to go back to the last save. So there's double auto save, so it will save continuously. But, you know, if you get too overzealous, then you're going to have to. Uh, but there's some really yeah. cool systems cool. in place for when you die, so okay. um, you see the health meter, it will go down as you get hit, and when it gets to the bottom, the whole thing starts to reduce, and that's as much health as you can regenerate next. So when that goes, then you're done. Yeah. But um, you can actually have your friends come save you in battle, so uh, if you're staggering around, you don't have any potions left, and you, you, know, you think you're on your last legs, if you can sort of keep going for as long as you can, somebody will come in and save you, and uh, you know... And of course, you can use items like Phoenix Down to um, yes. bring yourself back as well. Yeah, you can bring up this menu, choose who you want. Nobody needs it, so we're not going to use it. But but if they all die, you're still up. Um, you can get them back to life, or yeah, the other characters have a similar system to you. Okay. Yeah, you can use Phoenix Downs to bring them uh, bring them back. Just Is there stock anyone up on healer those. in the party, or um, can they all do they all have healing skills? They can all heal you. Um, so some of them have uh, techniques in the skill tree that you can unlock that are uh, more focused towards healing. So, um, yeah. And some of them have different states in which they do more healing. So like uh, Ignis, for example, I think um, he has a technique where if uh, he's got full health, he does a better boost to you and stuff like that. Yeah, we saw early on in the stream when we were going through the astral spheres with the attention system that yeah, both Prompto and uh, Ignis had heal abilities that, that you could unlock next if you wanted to. Cool, found something shiny. And, and that's the exciting thing as well is you know you've got these elements that people can you know are used to from previous Final yeah, Fantasy games you know true. Phoenix Downs and Chocobos and all that kind of stuff. But also for someone that's new, you, it's not so kind of oh my god what is all these things? It's stuff you're going to slowly learn and it's it's it, I think a lot of Final Fantasy games in the past might have been uh, new players might be put off. Oh, I've not played the first one. I don't understand the battle mechanics. But in this one, you've got a deep system for veteran players. But you've also got a nice introduction for new players as well. Exactly, and I think that's also, um, Joan, like you guys touched upon it before, like how everything 
it like has that sense of realism because mm. it makes it more relatable, yeah. right? Because you can you look at these guys and you're like, oh, they guys are driving a car. Mm. I understand that. Whereas <laughs> if they were, if they were, um, well, you should. <laughs> you should understand yeah. that. But then yeah. if, like in previous Final Fantasy games, if you saw them flying around in an airship, you might be like, it might, you know, it's not something that you would instantly relate to. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is I just picked up a fossil words, and uh, I'm going to use this because we're coming up to quite a strong enemy. I'm going to use this to show you the magic system. Mm -hmm. um, and this, again, so people that play other open world games should be quite familiar because it's like a crafting system. Okay. So when before we camped, we picked up some fire. Uh, we absorbed it from uh, the elemental things in the ground. And we're going to combine that, so we've added all the fire to our concoction, this is 38 power. We're going to add a catalyst, and uh, I'm going to see, what did we pick up? We've got a fossil wood, and this does different effects when you combine it. So you can make up all sorts of different spells by combining things you find, and uh, once you stick it all together, this, okay, so this does fire and poison, so I'm going to add all nine of those to... Uh, increase the number that we're going to use. And will these be, will you know that automatically all these will be things you need to learn by experimentation? Yeah, experimentation and once you've created it, it will be saved to like a recipe list of spells. So, you know, if you find a rare item that you combine with it and it's like, wow, this this does like five lightning bolts at once and it does 99 power, um, uh, you know, does, uh, or Firago, it has the same, again, for Final Fantasy fans, it's got yeah. Fira, Firago, Firaja. Uh, I'm not surprised about it anyway. Um, but yeah, it's got that sort of system and it's pretty... Um, oops, what have I just done? I've just removed that. So I need to stick that While we're looking at um, upgrading Noxus' magic skills, can I just ask, can you upgrade weapons in a similar way? Yes. Uh, so uh, you can go and find bits around the world, take them to Sid. He will upgrade your uh, weapons for you. And, uh, and obviously you can buy and find other weapons as well when you're walking around the, uh, the world. Okay, right. Now we're going to craft it. So, cool. Poison level 99. That will be useful. Uh, and I'm going to equip it to Noctis. Uh, just select the fire. Alright. And uh, while I'm here, I'm going to equip my Iron Bangle. I'm also just going to show you his casual outfit, which we can also change into. So right. Pretty got, casual. So now you've got like, weapons, but as well, something you can cause, like fire things. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Unlike previous Final Fantasies, uh, you can craft the magic and then you throw it. So that you can pick where you're going to throw it. Yeah. And I'm going to show you that now in this next okay. battle. So I think that will start, as I say, you know, veteran and new players. Because before, you know, uh, you know, you have almost the menu system. You choose ability, you choose a target, you wait for your turn. This is a lot more dynamic and a lot more kind of in the moment and it'll allow for a lot more great gameplay. Yeah, exactly. And okay. because the four items, weapon slots. They're all customizable, so you can choose, like, depending on how you want to play. If you want to have four magic spells and just go nuts with magic, then you can do you want four weapons. Three of one, like we have now, so it's completely your choice. And this is obviously a uh, going for boss here, and absolutely stunning graphics. And, uh... I really like it how they're like, oh, come on, you can do it, like, really yeah. <laughs> getting themselves up to going to a fight and trying to get yours first. And at, really at the same time, they're trying to look kind of cool doing yeah, it. Like, hey, come yeah. on, I can handle this. They're going to fight big <laughs> one. Let's wait for it to get close. It's gonna. All right. Let's try this. Okay, so oh, there we go. Right this thing. So he's poisoned. He's on fire. He's having a good time. So it's, it's not that you have to point out where. It's just like because you have already this uh, enemy attack, like attacked, you will put this always on him. It's yeah. not that you randomly. Just there, yeah, throw no, there it is a target system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But with previous Final Fantasy games boss battles, you tended to kind of have to learn their habits. So you'd go, oh, okay, right, in a second they're gonna, I'm gonna stagger them, and then I need to use, switch the paradigm and use these kind of attacks. But now it's completely up to you, there's no ATB or anything like that. How does that affect the strategy? Well, it affects it in, in well, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of different elements to combat. I mean, obviously we talk about like how the combat system kind of works, but I'm not sure if you just saw it in the stream, but then uh, Ian actually broke off the horn. Of, um, of the of the blood horn. Uh, so th certain enemies will have breakable parts. I guess is the way to put it. Um, so that yeah, if you target certain parts, break them off, they'll become weaker. So then you can, or you know, eliminate certain Anyone moves that they can do. Nice. Um, no. nice. Nice. <laughs> well done. Not very stealthy. Didn't even break guess. sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Giving us a moment. Ignis was almost dying. Uh, you said like the last health bar going down. That yeah. was the part you were talking about before. Um, 
you have to do something, or can you wait till the other ones are maybe doing something? They can do it too. So I didn't get to Ignis in time. I was trying to get to him. Yeah. Um, but then just before I got there, Gladio actually stepped in and healed Ignis himself. Yeah, so because uh, that last part was like, well, if that happens, if that is really going down, then he's really dead, right? Yeah. Okay. But it's really cool. Like, they just, you know, they, they will operate by themselves and, and, you know, and occasionally they'll do things like if you take out an enemy and you're nearby, they'll high five and fist bump <laughs> and stuff. And it's so cool. It's like, this is, these are like it's actual. Like a crew, really. yeah. yeah. And that will add to the story and your sense of, you know, relationships with the characters and make the journey all, all the more profound. Exactly, yeah. Because it gets you, it gets you involved. It, like, it makes yeah. you feel like you're part of these guys, and, you know, that you are on this journey with them. And then, like, yeah, the camaraderie yeah. between them. And you actually see, um, what Ian mentioned before on Ignis' health bar, you can see that because he was knocked out, yeah, the end of it's black, but then he's um, recovering to a certain point. And then yeah. when you camp, it'll be completely re okay. recovered. And Ian's doing something cheeky here. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's sprinting, but as his meter runs down, you press something right at the last moment, so you get a, uh, another full band, don't you? Uh, full bar, sorry. Yeah, basically, you let go of the button just, at, just as it hits the end. Oh, I just entered a battle, so it completely oh. ruined. Or oh, you just <laughs> ran away oh, from I don't want to get involved with that oh. thing. I'm going to just keep <laughs> you just running. Run away. Yeah, He's um, just chilling. He's no need to hurt him. Yeah, because yeah, the, um, cause it's a completely open world, you're probably going to be doing a lot of running. Hmm. So yeah, if, if we had the system where you know, you'd run out of stamina, it can be a bit you know, a bit of a down where you have to stop and start. Actually, this was a bit of, um, oh, something's going to happen. Wow. Uh -oh. that, 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 you, you didn't want to find the other one, but this one is much bigger. Well, that is that is <laughs> awesome. Like that the way it came nice. from the sun and the silhouette coming across the plane, beautiful. Do you know what's it great? Is, we have to fight that. That's not quite yet. Big. But I'm not saying anything else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna come in and attack us right now. <laughs> that is a really big target. That four <laughs> it's though. a big, it's a big thing. Yeah. Make sure you always look both ways when you're crossing so you the road. Yeah. 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 Stop, really look, listen, live. Yeah. You got, you got to look both ways across the road, but also you got to look up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> giant birds coming down. Can we talk oh. about the car? Because we haven't got to see much of the car this time around. Right. Um, are we going to it now? We're going to it We're now. We're going to get in the Brilliant. car. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the regalia. regalia. Yep, the royal, the royal ride. The royal, I the royal <laughs> ride. I wanted, royal to make, I wanted two R's. I'm like, what, what word for car can I use when that ride? The it's royal gonna, ride. It's going to have to be. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so the royal ride would have been repaired by this point? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we've saved uh, Cindy's friend and we've uh, destroyed the jewel horn. Uh, so I think we've done enough now to warrant, a f uh, you know, a car repair. I would hope. Yeah. Is this well, we got you a phone call. On the mini map, you see like the point of like the quest yeah. as well, like a little car. Is, yeah. Is, 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 has that something to do with that one? Are you going to get it? Yeah. Because so wherever you park your car, um, yeah. it will show up on the mini map. Okay, so so you say you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. and you, you know. We went a bit too far. <laughs> it's yeah. a classic. Where did we park? Yeah. <laughs> but it, the whole thing that you have like quests to do, I, I really love that. It's for me always something I love questing in games. Uh, sometimes when I'm on the highest level, I'm like, eh, what to do? Because you can gear up or whatever. But I really like do questing. So in that way, you always keep on going. And after a while, you're like, oh my god, it's ten hours <laughs> later. Uh, it's pretty much it. I think this really happens with this game as well. I think, oh, that's, yeah. I think that's the best thing, and you know, the fact that you, straight from the beginning, uh, that's it, you can go. Like, go find out, find <laughs> some quests, find, uh, do some hunts. Um, you know, there's nothing that's sort of like bundling you into one direction. Um, it will allow you to sort of just go out, find things. You know, you'll find people uh, broken down at the side of the road uh, that you can go help. Uh, you can find people trapped and, you know, sort of surrounded by saved us, so you can go help them. And there's all sorts to, to just see and do straight from the beginning. So, yeah. what you can also see a little bit of um, extra graphical detail, um, because that last fight with the dual horn was quite quite a rough battle. You can see you might have actually noticed it in the, the picture that prompted what well, had Cindy take one. That his hair's quite dusty and his clothes are all quite dusty because he has been running around and like, rolling see a in bit the mud. Of, bit of mud on his back actually. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing we haven't mentioned yet, and of course is I think because we assume it's amazing, is the music. You know, I play quite a lot of theater rhythm. Uh, I say I haven't played a Final Fantasy game, but I love theater rhythm. I love the music in this game and the refrains that signify other games and the new oh. soundtrack. I'm sure people can't wait to hear all the beautiful music this game's gonna. Oh have. yeah, the soundtrack is incredible. We actually um, did a concert recently at Abbey Road Studios, wow. which was yeah, we, we <laughs> debuted some new music on that, and it was uh, yeah, incredible. Uh, the composer Yoko Shimomura has done an incredible, incredible job. I saw the pictures of her on the uh, Abbey Road. Yeah, well you got it. When you're at Abbey Road, you have to. 
Speaking of music, actually, that was a good segue. That was a very good segue. Oh my. There's, a, there's a giant chocobo behind oh. it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I think. Uh, oh my, that looks amazing. Can you? Is it on the stream? Can you? Oh, you can. You yeah. Just oh, yeah. about to see gonna, it in the bottom. I'm telling it to come around, but actually, uh, I think we look can. Look at that. This and actually, can we just talk about the chocobos? I yep. know we're driving long, but I want to talk about the chocobos because it's jealous, that's normally, why. <laughs> if, if you come across an enemy, I say normally, in previous games, you come across an enemy and then you, the chocobos had got scared and chucked you off. But in this one, can you right. actually attack while sat on the chocobo? You can call chocobos in to help you um, <laughs> and, and help you in battle. I've not. <laughs> it's not it's sure. very difficult I to play <laughs> this while there's a chocobo behind me doing stuff, guys. I think, I think he wants us to get out of the car. All he wants us yeah, to ride like, a chocobo. What is this mechanical <laughs> nonsense? I'm, yeah. I'm a chocobo. That's all you need. It was left out. We've got the chocobo theme playing yeah. now. So it's oh, amazing. Oh, you put it on the radio. Oh, yeah, radio the, the thing, yeah, with the radio in the car. <laughs> You can change the music, and there's there's loads of uh, classic Final Fantasy. It's scary when it looks at you. <laughs> no, we've only got a few minutes left, I think. So tell us how can we get our hands, and when can we get our hands on this game? Well, the game, the the game Final Fantasy 15 is available on Xbox One and PlayStation 4, uh, November 29th worldwide. So in Japan, North America, and across Europe. And there's a couple of different editions as well. Yep, there's obviously there's a day one edition. Um, and there's a deluxe edition, which comes in a special steel case, along with uh, Kingsglaive, uh, which is the Final Fantasy uh, 15 film. Uh, and unfortunately, the, um, the there was I guess people are going to be asking, might be asking <laughs> in the chat about the. This is the this is, I can see the thing is I can. I'm trying to listen and be professional. I can see in the corner of my eye every now and then. I'm just like. I He's like, barely really can touch it, like a couple yeah. centimeters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't get a giant chocobo in any editions, do you, sadly? No, 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 sadly not. There's no giant chocobo. But yeah, if you guys Shit. are um, uh, coming to EGX, uh, yeah, the, we, have, uh, the, we have a bunch, we have a couple of chocobos for you guys, yeah, to come, come and meet. Because I'm sure, yeah, they'd love, they'd love to meet you as well. Yeah, I'm sure people love to get a photo with one as well, yeah. and you know, such a, such a <gasps> famous you. part of the game. I kind of, this is cheeky, I kind of want to see the chocobo's feathers. I, I don't know if the chocobo would turn around. Oh, I think, yeah, 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 no. No, 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 the chocobo, no, the chocobo, the chocobo will not no, turn around. That no. was a very rude request. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Look, I'm, you're looking at chocobo from behind? That I'm, I'm quite so sorry, that is, that is scandalous. It's, uh, it's my first time on the Twitch sofa, <laughs> and I have already... You know, being a little Taking bit rude, I apologize. It's too early in the morning. Like um, in the and if you're at EGX, you can also play the game here. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have uh, we have a lot of stations. I think um, I haven't seen it since. I've been back to the booth since the doors opened, but I had a 